it's wonderful that we can produce these things through this generative AI technology. There's an aspect here from my perspective of like the ethics and fairness of, well, just because we can, should we? We are doing um, a lot of research on deep fake technology as it relates to audio, specifically as it relates to African-American vernacular. So what we're trying to do is determine if we can figure out if a real person is actually speaking African-American vernacular or um, a deep fake technology is actually speaking. And we're trying to figure out if we can circumvent some of the things that may occur if a deep fake um, would actually occur. So what we're trying to do is uh, really look at like, what are the human characteristics about us? Like the way that I'm speaking, um, the way that I'm talking when I'm nervous or I'm talking when I'm excited, the behavioral information to understand what are the differences between deep fake technology and actually audio that is a real human. In, a, in an industry that's flatlined for many, many years, Energy use in U.S. has been about 4,000 billion units per year in the, in the last decade. But now we are, we are, all the forecasts are pointing to an increase of 1% of energy use in the next five years. So every year, 1% increase. So the industry is uh, definitely having a big challenge. Firstly, in the generation, you know, you need that energy, right? Um, and, and somebody needs to bring it in. And so the data centers... Um, would need different, different sources to, to get this energy, whether they bring it from their end or they invest in new technologies. And we are not talking about 10 megawatts, we're not talking about 20 megawatts, we are talking about gigawatts of coincident uh, changes in, in, in the energy use. And this is a challenge for the grid operators. So we, we have multiple challenges that we, uh, we need to look at, but we, this is also helping us you know, um, bring the energy uh, sector to its next evolution. The technology itself has potential, and we haven't yet figured out quite like where to apply it. And so we shouldn't limit the potential. It's beyond us to figure out where did it go wrong. Like we have so much data, we have access to so much information that we have no choice other than to move in the direction of allowing the computer, allowing AI, allowing the processing to help us. Because as humans, we have limitations. We can't actually do a trillion computations in our brain. So to advance, we have to leverage this in a way. So it's almost like you have to accept that you're gonna get it wrong, but then you have to be grounded enough to say, okay, how can I assess at the top level, did I get the answer that makes sense or not make sense? Because I can't drill into the details. These technologies, they are, they're general purpose, right? And they can be used in lots of different ways. They can be used for malfeasance. They can be used for, in, in, to, to the benefits of, of, of people. It's up for us to kind of decide. And I think we're gonna be in an inflection point where we do have to decide. We can deploy technologies and displace people. We can employ technologies to enhance or enrich the work that people actually have. I think we as a society are going to have to come to terms with this. For me, it's just enabling humans to do more. Because when you think about like even basic computation, Right, the idea of a calculator was very simple, but that moved the capability of people to do a lot more. And I think of this as like abstraction of programming. Like you didn't have to do assembly hand, move numbers from one register to another. You can abstract to like some language based and then people can just talk and say, I want this to happen and something can help create it. Um, so I think of it's like enabling us as humans to allow more people to do more sophisticated work in a very simple, normal human behavior way.